Hello everyone. Welcome to Nasso Academy. In the previous lecture, we understood conditional operator in C++. We learned that conditional operator is a ternary operator because it accepts three operands. Now in this lecture, we will understand relational operators. The focus of this lecture is to properly understand relational operators in C++. So without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. There is only one topic and the name of the topic is relational operators. So let's proceed further and let's understand what are relational operators. A relational operator is the operator through which we can compare two operands. So, with the help of relational operator, we can compare two operands. This means a relational operator is a binary operator. It can act on two operands. Now, here is the second point. It returns either 1 or 0 as the result. So, there are only two possible outcomes. We will either get 1 or 0 as the result. Where 1 represents true and 0 represents false. I hope this is clear to you. Now, here is the third point. It is mostly used in conditionals and loops. A relational operator is mostly used in conditionals and loops. With the help of a relational operator, we can check a specific condition. That is, we can compare two operands. And based on the comparison, we will either get true or false as the result. If we get true as the result, then a specific task will get executed. This is something we will learn when we understand conditionals and loops. Later in this course, we will understand conditionals and loops. For now, we just need to remember that with the help of a relational operator, we can compare two operands. And this means we can check a specific condition and perform task based on that condition. So, I hope these points are clear to you about relational operators. Now, with the help of an example program, let's try to understand how to use a relational operator in C++. Here in this example program, I have included the iostream header file because here I am using stdc out. Inside this main function, I have defined these variables a and b. Variable a is initialized with value 10 and variable b is initialized with value 20. These are integer variables. This is what we can observe. Then we have this integer variable result and to this variable, I am trying to assign the result of a greater than b. Here I am checking this specific condition. Is a greater than b? We know the value of A is 10 and value of B is 20. So, I am comparing 10 and 20 with the help of this relational operator greater than. I hope this is clear to you. We know that 10 is not greater than 20. So, we will get 0 as the result which is same as false. I have already mentioned this that with the help of a relational operator, we either get 0 or 1 as the result, where 0 represents false and 1 represents true. Here in this example, we will get 0 as the result. So, clearly we know that variable result will hold value 0. Now, we can display this value on the screen with the help of STDC out. When we execute this program, we will get 0 as the output. I hope this is clear to you. We are getting 0 because this condition is not satisfied or we can say this condition has turned out to be false. So, with this we have learned how to use a relational operator in a C++ program. Later, we will understand its actual usage. We will understand how to use relational operators in conditionals and loops. For now, we know how to use a relational operator in a C++ program. In this program, I have used this greater than operator, which is a relational operator. But this is not the only relational operator available in C++. 
we have many relational operators. Now let's see those relational operators and let's try to understand their working. Here in this table, I will list down different operations we have and corresponding to those operations, I will also list down symbols, examples and results. Here is the first operation, less than, symbol is less than and example is 3 less than 6. Here I am checking is 3 less than 6. We know 3 is less than 6, therefore we will get 1 as the result, which represents true. The second operation is greater than, symbol is greater than and example is 3 greater than 6. We know 3 is not greater than 6, so we will get 0 as the result, which represents false. The third operation is less than or equal to. Symbol is less than combined with equal to. Here we have the example 3 less than equal to 6. Here I am checking two conditions at the same time. I am checking whether 3 is less than 6 and 3 is equal to 6. In other words, I am checking two conditions at the same time. If any one of the conditions gets satisfied, that is if we get true out of any of the conditions, then the entire less than equal to will turn out to be true. This means from this condition, we will get true as the result. We know that 3 is less than 6, although 3 is not equal to 6, but at least 3 is less than 6. As one of the conditions is satisfied, so we will get 1 as the result. I hope this is clear to you. We are getting 1 as the result of this less than or equal to operator. So with this we have understood the third operation. Now let's move to the fourth operation. The fourth operation is greater than or equal to. Symbol is greater than combined with equal to. Example is 3 greater than or equal to 6. Here I am checking whether 3 is greater than 6 or 3 is equal to 6. We know that 3 is not equal to 6 and 3 is not greater than 6. This means none of the conditions are satisfied. Not even a single condition is satisfied and therefore we will get 0 as the result. I hope this makes sense to you. If in place of 6 we have 3, then we will get true as the result because at least one condition is satisfied. We know that 3 is equal to 3, therefore we will get 1 as the result. Now here comes the fifth operation, is equal to, symbol is double equal sign. We have double equal as the symbol for is equal to. Example is 3 equal to 6. We know 3 is not equal to 6, so we will get 0 as the result. Now here is the last operation, the sixth operation, which is not equal to. Symbol for not equal to is exclamation mark with equal symbol. And here is the example, 3 not equal to 6. Here I am checking whether 3 is not equal to 6. We know 3 is not equal to 6, so we will get 1 as the result. I hope these operators are clear to you. These are all the relational operators we have in C++. So with this, we have understood what are relational operators, what are the different types of relational operators we have. And with the help of these examples, we have understood how these relational operators work. So with this, we have understood the topic relational operators and this means we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.